Watch this video, learn to change key, and write better songs. Let's begin. In music theory, the key of a composition refers to the scale that a piece of music draws all of its notes from. If a song uses the notes from a particular scale, then it is said to be in the key of that scale, or in the tonality of that scale. If you hear that something is in the key of a note, without reference to major or minor, then it is assumed to be in a major key. For example, a song in the key of C would usually be implying that, that it is in the key of C major. The notes in the scale will allow you to construct a series of different chords. These chords are used in chord progressions to create a song with. You can also look at the chords used in the song to identify what key it is in. The most important note in the scale is the tonic note, and similarly, the most important chord in a key is the tonic chord. This chord will feel like home and will have the same letter and tonality as the relevant scale. For example, in the C major scale, the first note or tonic note is C. In the key of C major, the tonic chord is the C major chord. You may see this labelled with the one Roman numeral. The key of a song is usually established by frequently returning to the tonic chord and arranging other chords around the tonic chord to make it feel like the home chord of the song. This is sometimes referred to as the tonal centre. There can be some ambiguity about the tonal centre of certain songs, so be aware that it isn't always clear cut. That's music theory for you. So a song will be in a certain key, but it is perfectly possible for a song to move to a different key within the song. This is called a key change or modulation. These terms are used interchangeably and often mean the same thing. But it is worth being aware that some people will use them to refer to slightly different things. Modulation can be thought of as the process of changing key, whilst the key change is the final result of this modulation. Another way of looking at it might be that modulation is a temporary event within a piece of music, whereas a key change is more permanent or final. If this seems confusing, don't panic. Just know that the key of a song can change. It's all well and good knowing that a song can change key, but why would we even want to change key? When writing a song with a set of chords in a key, it can sometimes begin to feel a bit static and boring. After several repeats, the song may feel like it wants to go somewhere else. An easy way to achieve this is by changing the key of the song. Think of the final chorus of many 80s pop songs. That shift up is a key change used to elevate the final chorus to add emotion and energy. Songs can have several key changes within them. This might help to reinforce the lyrics or create a journey with the music, starting somewhere, going somewhere else, and then either returning home or continuing on a journey of further key changes. So key changes are a widely used songwriting technique that can create a wide diversity of sounds and feelings. But how do we change key? This is a question with a huge range of answers. Let's first look at relative key changes. Examples will be presented in Hookpad. Use the link in the description to get Hookpad and follow along. For example, a song that uses the notes from the C major scale is in the key of C major. The C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A and B. The A natural minor scale has the notes A, B, C, D, E, F and G. It is worth being aware that there is more than one minor scale. We won't go into detail about this here, but where we mention the minor scale, we are referring to the natural minor scale. This is also known as the Aeolian mode or the sixth mode of the major scale. You can see that the C major and A minor scales have the same set of notes, which just start and end on different notes. Because of this, these two scales are called relative scales. C major is the relative major of A minor, and A minor is the relative minor of C major. Major. We know that a key refers to the scale that a song is created from, so you can also have relative keys. Therefore, the relative key of C major is A minor, and vice versa. We can see this by looking at the chords in each key. Chords in a key, also known as triads, are created by each using three notes from the relevant scale. The C major key has the chords 1 C major, 2 D minor, 3 E minor, 4 F major, 5 G major, 6 A minor, and 7 B diminished. And the A minor key has the chords 1 A minor, 2 B diminished, 
3 C major, 4 D minor, 5 E minor, 6 F major and 7 G major. Because these two relative keys have the same set of chords, it is easy to modulate between the two. It is worth visualising these keys on the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is a commonly used diagram in music theory. It shows the relationship between all of the notes in Western music and has a lot of applications. We have a video in the description if you would like to learn more about it. If you look at the circle, you'll see that it actually has two circles, an outer one and an inner one. In the 12 o'clock position on the outer circle, you'll see the letter C. In relation to keys, think of this outer circle as the major keys. So the C represents the C major key. Directly below this on the inner circle is the letter A. Think of this inner circle as the minor keys. We know that A minor is the relative minor key of C major and vice versa, and the circle confirms this. It also shows you the relative keys of any key as they are directly above or below each other. This is extremely useful to refer to when thinking about a relative modulation for your song. So now we know what relative keys are and how to find them, but how do we write a relative modulation for our song? We'll start by looking at moving from a minor key to its relative major. One of the most important relationships in major key songs is between the 5 chord and the 1 chord. Moving from 5 to 1 is called a perfect cadence. Playing this chord change will provide a very strong feeling of returning home. By doing so it will reinforce the major key feeling. Because our relative keys share the same set of chords, we can use the 5 to 1 change to bring us back to the major key. Let's use the relative A minor and C major keys we discussed earlier to look at this. In the key of C major, the 5 to 1 change uses the G major chord and the C major chord. So if we end our A minor key chord progression on the G major chord and start our C major key progression on the C major chord, then we have a perfect cadence to bring us into the major key. In a minor key, this 5 chord from its relative major will always be the 7 chord. For example, in the key of C major, the 5 chord is G major, and in the key of A minor, the 7 chord is also G major. Listen out for this change in the following example at bar 8. We will also use a simple 1, 4, 5, 1 progression in A minor, and then a simple 1, 4, 5, 1 progression in C major. The impact of modulating may be more subtle with relative keys because of their closeness. Sometimes it doesn't sound like we have even changed key. If you want to really make your changes clear then you will want to centre your progression around the one chord, at least initially after the key change, in order to establish the new tonal centre. Another cadence used in major key songs is the 4 to 1 change. It is sometimes called the Amen or Plagial Cadence. In a minor key this 4 chord from its relative major will always be the 6 chord. For example, in the key of C major, the 4 chord is F major, and in the key of A minor, the 6 chord is also F major. So let's use our previous example and just change the 7 chord in bar 8 for the 6 chord. Listen out for the difference in this particular cadence when we modulate to the relative major key. You will quite often see 4 and 5 played together in a major key. Using these chords to lead to the 1 chord are the strongest way to define that you are in a major key and are often used to start a piece or bring a song to a strong close. We'll put them together in bars 7 and 8 of our example progression. Remember that in a minor key this would be chords 6 and 7.
Next we will look at changing the 7 chord to a dominant 7th chord. In a major key the 5 chord is often played as a dominant 7th. This strengthens the cadence, really amplifying the desire for the 5 chord to resolve to 1. If you would like a full explanation of the dominant 7th, then check out our video linked in the description. Let's change our 7 chord in bar 8 to the dominant 7th to hear this strong cadence. We've looked at modulating from minor to relative major, now let's reverse the situation and move from major to relative minor. In general you can use any of the chords to move to the relative minor key, but let's start by looking at some more cadences. We saw earlier that a 4 to 1 change in a major key is called a plagial cadence. Handily, moving from 4 to 1 in a minor key is also called a plagial cadence. The 4 chord in a minor key is the 2 chord in its relative major key. So let's take our previous chord progressions to demonstrate this. We'll start in C major this time and change our chord in bar 8 to the 2 chord to set up our plagial cadence with the 1 chord in the key of A minor in bar 9. You may wonder why we haven't used the 5 to 1 change in our minor key modulation, like we did when moving to a major key. The reason is because this has a weaker effect in a minor key and doesn't pull us as strongly to the tonic or 1 chord. This is because of the notes that make up our minor 5 chord. Let's look at our 5 to 1 change in C major to demonstrate this. The 5 chord in the key of C major is G major. The G major chord has the notes G, B and D. The C major chord has the notes C, E and G. Look at the middle note or third note in the G major chord. It is B. This is the closest note to the root or tonic of C major. It is only half a step or a semitone away from it. This creates the strong pull or desire to resolve that we hear in the perfect cadence. Now let's do the same again in the key of A minor. The 5 chord is E minor. The E minor chord has the notes E, G and B. The middle note is now called a flat or minor third note and in the E minor chord it is G. We've got links in the description if you'd like to learn more about chord construction. The G note is a whole step or tone away from the root or tonic of the one chord A minor. So we are twice the distance away from the tonic as we were in C major. This is why the sense of cadence is much weaker. The minor third note isn't demanding we move to the tonic as strongly as the third note did. So a common songwriting technique is to change this chord to a major chord. In our example if we change E minor to E major, the only note that changes is the flat or minor third, moving it up half a step or semitone and recreating the effect we had in the major key with the perfect cadence. Let's demonstrate this with our chord progression example. We'll start in the key of C major. On the first playthrough we will end in bar 8 on the minor 5 chord from the relative minor. This is chord 3 in the major key. We'll then modulate to the key of A minor. We'll end on the 7 chord to take us around to the C major key again. We'll then repeat the whole thing but on the 2nd major key section we will end on the major 3 chord we discussed to create our cadence. Listen to the difference that this small change makes. We are now undoubtedly in a minor key. We will also play the cadence again at the end of the progression to bring it to a close. Cadences like this are useful for bringing songs to a secure close.
As with our major key perfect cadence, we can change the major 5 chord to a dominant 7th chord. As before, this will enhance the cadence. Here it is in bar 8 of our progression. We've explained the basic mechanics of the relative modulation, and you should be able to use it in a few different ways. The only problem with our examples so far is they only used simple chord progressions that started on the one chord of their respective keys. As you may be aware, this is not the norm throughout a song. To provide a more real world example, we will start with the song we created in our Major Key Song Masterclass. If you would like to see the reasoning behind its structure, check out the masterclass video we made for it. We'll give you the link at the end of this video. Let's listen to the original song. The first thing to note is that the song is in the key of G major. Don't panic as everything we learnt applies to any major key. We simply follow the same rules for the relevant Roman numerals and it will work in exactly the same way. If we consult the circle of fifths, we can see that G is in the one o'clock position on the outer circle. We know that the relative minor will be directly below this. So our relative minor key is E minor. The song has the structure intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. The two most obvious candidates for a key change would be the bridge or the final chorus. This is because later on in songs, after a few repeats, it tends to feel like we want to move the song on somewhere new and reduce monotony. If you were listening closely or have seen the full explainer video, you will know that the start of the final chorus has different chords to the other chorus repeats. This already provides a nice change, so for today we will modulate the relative minor for the bridge and then back to the relative major for the final chorus. The second chorus ends on bar 36 with a 5 chord. As we are now moving to the relative major, we'll change this to the major 3 chord, B major. This strongly draws us into the bridge, where we expect to hear the 1 chord of the minor key. But we'll preserve the structure of the existing bridge using the same Roman numerals. This delays the new 1 chord E minor until bar 41. We'll keep the inversions as before, but now we'll use the 5 major chord to lead us to the 1 chord in bars 41 and 43 to reinforce the minor key. Listen to the very different angst this brings the bridge compared to before. Then in bar 44 we use chord 6 and 7 dominant 7th to provide a strong cadence back to the major key. This is frustrated in bar 45 because in the final chorus we use the relative minor chord of 1 here. 
but the overall effect is that we've moved somewhere else again. See how many considerations there are when preparing even a simple relative key change in your song. The best approach is to experiment with it in your own songwriting, and if it doesn't give your song what you think it needs, then don't worry about it. It is simply a single tool in the songwriting toolkit. Let's listen to our revised song to see how it now sounds. If you want free resources to help your songwriting, visit our website at writersongnow.com. Next up are parallel key changes. The C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A and B. The C natural minor scale has the notes C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat and B flat. It is worth being aware that there is more than one minor scale. We won't go into detail about this here, but where we mention the minor scale, we are referring to the natural minor scale. This is also known as the Aeolian mode or the sixth mode of the major scale. You can see that both scales start on the same note. This is called the root note or tonic note. Because of this, these two scales are said to be parallel scales. The C major scale is the parallel major scale of the C minor scale, Equally, the C minor scale is the parallel minor scale of the C major scale. We know that a key refers to the scale that a song is created from, so you can also have parallel keys. Therefore, the parallel key of C major is C minor and vice versa. The major or minor element of a key is referred to as its tonality. In order to build a song, we will need some chords. The C major key has the chords 1 C major, 2 D minor, 3 E minor, 4 F major, 5 G major, 6 A minor and 7 B diminished. The C minor key has the chords 1 C minor, 2 D diminished, 3 E flat major, 4 F minor, 5 G minor, 6 A flat major and 7 B flat major. You can see that despite having the same root or tonic note in the scale, these two parallel keys do not have any chords in common. So now we know what parallel keys are and that they have different sets of chords, but how do we write a parallel modulation for a song? A common way to modulate is by using common chords between the two keys, but we know that parallel keys have no chords in common. So what do we do in this situation? Let's start by moving from major to parallel minor to look at modulation techniques. Moving from a major key to its parallel minor has a dark and gloomy effect, which can sound like the walls of the song are closing in. This can provide a useful sad contrast within an existing major key song. One of the most important relationships in major key songs is between the 5 chord and the 1 chord. Moving from 5 to 1 is called a perfect cadence. Playing this chord change will provide a very strong feeling of returning home. By doing so it will reinforce the major key feeling. 
You can see that the major 5 chord only appears in our major key chords. In the parallel minor, the 5 chord is a minor chord. The minor 5 chord has a weaker effect in a minor key and doesn't pull us as strongly to the tonic or 1 chord. This is because of the notes that make up our minor 5 chord. Let's look at a 5 to 1 change in the key of C major to demonstrate this. The 5 chord in the key of C major is G major. The G major chord has the notes G, B and D. The C major chord has the notes C, E and G. Look at the middle note or third note in the G major chord. It is B. This is the closest note to the root or tonic of C major. It is only half a step or a semitone away from it. This creates the strong pull or desire to resolve that we hear in the perfect cadence. Now let's do the same again in the key of C minor. The 5 chord is G minor. The G minor chord has the notes G, B flat and D. The middle note is now called a flat or minor third note and in the G minor chord it is B flat. We've got links in the description if you would like to learn more about chord construction. The B flat note is a whole step or tone away from the root or tonic of the 1 chord C minor. So we are twice the distance away from the tonic as we were in C major. This is why the sense of cadence is much weaker. The minor third note isn't demanding we move to the tonic as strongly as the third note did. So a common songwriting technique is to change this chord to a major chord. In our example, if we change G minor to G major, the only note that changes is the flat or minor third, moving it up half a step or semitone and recreating the effect we had in the major key with the perfect cadence. You could also think of this major 5 chord as a borrowed chord. We have borrowed it from the parallel major key. By using this major 5 chord we have a powerful bridge between our major and minor keys. Time for an example. We'll begin with the very popular 1-5-6-4 progression in the key of C major. On the second repeat we will swap the 5 and 4 chords around so we end on bar 8 with the major 5 chord we discussed earlier. This will be our link to the parallel C minor key. We'll then use a 1-5-6-4 progression in our parallel minor key. Listen out for the gloomy minor change when we modulate. Another widely used technique is to play the major 5 chord as a dominant 7th chord. This further intensifies the perfect cadence effect. We have a video all about dominant 7th chords in the description below for further details about this. We'll change the 5 chord in bar 8 to a dominant 7th to strongly draw us into the parallel minor key. If we swap the minor 5 and 4 chords around this time and change the 5 chord to a major 5 dominant 7th, you'll hear how they sound in the minor key as well. The technique of using borrowed chords is widely deployed by songwriters. This allows a song in a major key to use a wider palette of chords and therefore reduce monotony. A common candidate for this is what's known as the flat 6 chord. In the key of C major the 6 chord is A minor. If we take the root note of this chord, A, and drop it by half a step then it becomes A flat. If we construct a major chord with the root note of A flat then we have an A flat major chord. So the flat 6 Roman numeral shows us that we have flattened the root note of the 6 minor chord and created a major chord from this. If you remember from earlier, A flat major is the 6 chord in the key of C minor, so this presents us with a new opportunity to change to the parallel key. This will work with any major key, the rule is always the same, the flat 6 chord of a major key is the 6 chord of its parallel minor key. If you'd like more help with flattened degree chords, we have a couple of videos in the description below. Let's use the flat 6 chord in our previous progression. We'll make a simple tweak to bars 6 to 8. 
The five chord isn't needed for our modulation, so we will replace it with the flat six and put the four chord before this. Once we've changed to the parallel minor, we'll keep everything the same, including the major five dominant seventh chords. Listen to how the six chords sound in the minor key part of the song, compared to at the end of the major key section. Two other commonly used flattened degree chords in a major key are flat 3 and flat 7. Their construction works in the same way as we described with the flat 6 chord. The videos in the description will give you the full lowdown on these, but for now just know that the flat 3 chord in a major key is the same as the 3 chord in the parallel minor key, and the flat 7 chord is the same as the 7 chord. As before, you can also think of these as borrowed chords from the parallel minor key. Let's use them in our previous example. This time we will put these chords in bars 7 and 8 to create our modulation to the parallel minor key and lead into them with the 4 chord. We've looked at moving from major to parallel minor, now let's reverse the situation and move from minor to parallel major. Where changing from major to parallel minor felt gloomy or closing in, the opposite is true for moving from minor to parallel major. It brightens up the song like a ray of sunshine. It feels like the song is opening up in front of us. We'll use the same keys as before for examples, C minor and C major. The easiest and strongest way to move from minor to parallel major is to use our major 5 chord again. The perfect cadence will firmly set us up in the parallel major after the modulation. You can also use the dominant 7th 5 chord as before to strengthen this. We'll stick with the 1, 5, 6, 4 progression. On the second repeat in bars 5 to 8, we will swap the 4 and 5 chords around. The 5 chord in bar 8 will become a major dominant 7th chord to create our strong cadence to the parallel major key. Once in the major key, we will repeat the basic 1, 5, 6, 4 progression twice. Listen to the difference compared to modulating from major to parallel minor. We can also use the flattened degree chords we saw earlier to modulate. Of course, in a minor key they are no longer flattened degree chords and are just basic chords in the key. Let's use the 6 chord for our modulation this time. We discussed the perfect cadence earlier. There is also another common cadence which is called the plagial cadence. This is when we move from the 4 chord to the 1 chord. It is found in both major and minor keys. We can use this to move from the minor key to the parallel major. 
We'll give you two examples here. First in bar 8 we will use the minor 4 chord, then in bar 16 we will use the major 5 dominant 7th chord to take us back to the C minor key. In bar 24 we will use the major 4 chord. Listen to the difference the major 4 chord gives the modulation compared to the minor 4. We've explained the basic mechanics of the parallel modulation and you should be able to use it in a few different ways. We'll use the full G major key song you saw in the relative key change example now. Because parallel keys are simple to understand, we know that the parallel minor of our G major key will be the key of G minor. The song has the structure intro verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus. The two most obvious candidates for a key change would be the bridge or the final chorus. This is because later on in songs, after a few repeats, it tends to be where we want to move the song on somewhere new and reduce monotony. The use of inversions in the bridge already provides an interesting contrast to the rest of the song. It also ends on the major 5 chord in bar 44. As we discussed earlier, this major 5 chord can be used to modulate to the parallel minor key. So we'll just change it to a dominant 7th chord and then we can play our final chorus in the key of G minor. If you were listening to the original closely, or have seen our explainer video, you will know that the first half of the final chorus has different chords. Because we are changing key for our final chorus now, we will change it to two repeats of 1, 3, 4, 5. This preserves the Roman numeral structure from the major key choruses. We will continue to utilise the major 5 dominant 7th chord from the modulation in our minor key chorus to provide a nice consistency at the end of each 4 bar sequence. We still end on the G major chord which provides a nice perfect cadence with the final major 5 chord of the chorus. See how many considerations there are when preparing even a simple parallel key change in your song. The best approach is to experiment with it in your own songwriting and if it doesn't give your song what you think it needs, then don't worry about it. It is simply a single tool in the songwriting toolkit. Let's listen to our revised song to see how it now sounds.
Time now for direct key changes. There are 12 notes in Western music. The distance between each of these notes is called a half step or semitone. If we travel twice this distance, it is called a whole step or tone. The distance between two notes is also known as an interval. Intervals allow you to describe distances bigger than the whole step. If you'd like to learn more about intervals, then check out our video in the description. You can also visualize keys in a similar way. So if you think of the C major key we mentioned as the C note, then half a step up from this is the D flat major key, and a whole step up from C is the D major key. This would work the same way if you were using minor keys as well. This simple idea is basically what a direct key change or modulation by step involves. You start in a particular key and then move up or down a short distance to another key. This modulation is sometimes referred to as a gear shift. There is usually no preparation or nuance. We go from one key up or down to the next. It can feel a bit cliched or lazy due to its overuse in pop music, but it might be just what your song is after to elevate it. The most common approach with direct modulation is to keep the same chord progression Roman numerals from before and after the key change. The most popular example you will see is shifting the key of a final chorus up to inject some energy. Let's run through some examples to see this in action. We'll use the key of C major we saw earlier and play a simple 1-5-6-4 progression through twice. Then we will perform a direct modulation to the next key where we play the same Roman numerals in the same order. Let's start with probably the most common direct modulation, moving up half a step. We'll move from the key of C major to the key of D flat major. Listen to the change in sound this creates. For our next example, we will go in the opposite direction and move down half a step from C major to the key of B major. Shifting in a downward direction is less common in songwriting. This is because direct modulation is usually used to inject energy at the end of a song and moving down has the opposite effect. Listen out for the difference in this example. In our next example, we will double the distance of the change from half a step to a whole step. We'll start by moving up from C major to D major. Listen out for the difference this bigger shift creates. And now we'll move down a whole step from C major to B flat major. Shifts bigger than a whole step are less common. This is often because it really puts pressure on a singer to change key in this way. But they are perfectly possible and the sky really is the limit. In the next examples we will move a distance of a minor third. 
This is the equivalent of three half steps. If you want to learn more about different intervals, then our video in the description will explain them all. First we move up a minor third from C major to E flat major. And now we will shift down a minor third from C major to A major. You can also perform several direct modulations in the same song. You may have heard this in a song before, and it can become a bit ridiculous like you are on an escalator continually shifting up, but if used carefully it can be effective. We'll use our same progression from before in this example, starting in C major, shifting up half a step to D flat major, and then finally shifting up a whole step to E flat major. We've seen a series of simple modulation by step examples, but how would you approach using them in an existing song? It's time to use the G major key song you heard earlier. As we've mentioned in this video, you usually see a direct modulation upwards in the final chorus to inject some emotion and energy. We'll start our first modulation at the bridge in bar 37. We'll move down half a step to F sharp major. Listen to the surprise turn you get by moving down for the bridge. After the bridge, the song goes back to the chorus in bar 45. You will have seen that the first half of the final chorus had different chords in the original song. For our revised song, we will use the same Roman numerals as the other choruses to preserve continuity. The difference will come from the direct modulation up to A major. This is a minor third higher than the bridge and a whole step higher than the rest of the song in the key of G major. This injects some new energy for the end of the song. Finally, we come back to the G major chord in the key of G major to end the song in the home key. See how many considerations there are when preparing even a simple direct key change in your song. The best approach is to experiment with it in your own songwriting, and if it doesn't give your song what you think it needs, then don't worry about it. It is simply a single tool in the songwriting toolkit. Let's listen to our revised song to see how it now sounds with our gear shifts.
Now I'll show you common chord key changes. One of the most popular ways to change key is called common chord or pivot chord modulation. As the name suggests, this involves finding a chord that two keys share and using it to modulate or pivot between keys. You are free to hunt down shared chords between keys and use them to modulate however you like. But a few strategies can make the chords easier to find and the modulation sound smoother and more effective. We'll start by using the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is a commonly used diagram in music theory. It shows the relationship between all of the notes in Western music and has a lot of applications. We have a video in the description if you'd like to learn more about it. You can see the circle actually has two circles. Think of the outer circle as the major keys and the inner circle as the minor keys. So at 12 o'clock on the outer circle we have C. Think of this as the C major key, which has the chords we discussed earlier. Directly below this is A. Think of this as the A minor key. It has exactly the same chords as the C major key. These are called relative keys. We won't go into further info about this here, but check out our relative modulation video in the description for an in-depth explanation. Immediately next to C on the outer circle is G. As you'd expect, this represents the G major key. Let's compare the chords in G major with the chords in C major. You'll see that they have four chords in common. G major, A minor, C major, and E minor. Keys that have four chords in common are also known as closely related keys. The circle of fifths will always show these closely related keys next to each other. So in our C major key example, we know that G major is directly next to it on the circle and has four chords in common. And we know that the A minor key directly below it is the relative key. So the three remaining closely related keys are F major, D minor, and E minor. It is perfectly possible to modulate between any of these keys, regardless of whether they are major or minor. Let's look at some common chord modulation examples using these closely related keys. We'll use the C major key as our initial key and the G major key we saw earlier as our destination key. There are four chords in common. Let's explore each in turn. G major is the one chord in the key of G major and the five chord in the key of C major. The five chord plays an important role in major key chord progressions. You may also see it referred to as the dominant chord. It has an extremely strong desire to resolve back to the one chord. For this reason, it is often used at the end of chord progressions in order to bring us back to the one chord and establish the key. This means that using the five chord to pivot keys is not the best choice as it will draw the listener back to the tonal center of the initial key and not move us onto the tonal center of the destination key. This is not to say that you cannot use this chord, but for now we will remove it from our possible list of pivot chords. Next up is A minor. This is the two chord in the key of G major and the six chord in the key of C major. This chord will work nicely as a pivot chord, so let's look at our first example. First of all, we will play a chord progression in our initial key of C major. We will use a very common chord progression, one, five, six, four. After two repeats of this, we will begin our modulation. In bar nine, we play the pivot chord A minor. We have now changed key, but we need to cement the change by reinforcing our new tonal center of G major. A good way to do this is by using the dominant five chord we discussed. The five chord in our destination key of G major is D major. If you want to further intensify the dominant five chords draw back to the one chord, then you can turn it into a dominant seventh chord. This is also known as a perfect cadence. If you'd like to learn more about dominant seventh chords, then we have a video in the description. Next up, we'll play the new one chord of G major to reinforce the changed tonal center. We repeat the five dominant seventh to one change again to really establish the new key. Then we can go into our new key chord progression. This could be anything, but for comparison, we will play the same one, five, six, four chord progression as we did in the initial key. Listen out for the C major chord coming back in bar 16 and how it no longer feels like the tonal center of the song.
Let's look at the third shared chord between the keys of C major and G major, the C major chord. The C major chord is the one or tonic chord in the key of C major. So your first thought may be that it won't be useful as a pivot, but it is also the four chord in our destination key of G major. The four chord is also known as the subdominant. It can draw us back to the one chord, albeit in a weaker way than the five chord. You may see the four to one change called the plagial cadence or amen cadence. How can we make this modulation work? We'll start by using the one, five, six, four progression twice as before in the key of C major. In bar nine, we'll play our pivot chord C major. Then in our new key, we'll play the five dominant seventh chord again to lead us to the new one chord G major. Pairing the four chord with the five chord further intensifies the cadence firmly establishing the new key. Once in the key of G major, we use the same techniques as in the previous example, using five dominant seventh chords moving to one before getting into our destination key chord progression. As before, listen out for the changing role of the C major chord. We're now left with one common chord between the keys of C major and G major, E minor. E minor is the three chord in the key of C major and the six chord in our destination key of G major. These minor chords don't have such a strong role in major key songs. This will allow us to create a more drawn out, almost delayed key change this time. We'll use the structure that our other examples used. In bar nine, we'll play the pivot chord E minor. Then we'll change to the destination key of G major. We'll go through a one, four, five dominant seventh sequence to establish the key before going into our chord progression. We're using all chords from the initial key until the five dominant seventh chord in bar 12. Indeed, the C major chord in bar 11 does sound like it is still the tonal center until the five chord hits. This may be an effect you don't want in your song, so always be aware of the role of the chords you use for your key changes. You're now armed with enough technique to use a pivot chord between any major keys. You just need to be aware of the role of each chord in its initial major key and destination major key, and you should be able to construct a key change. It's worth noting that as you move further away from your chosen key on the circle of fifths, then the keys will have fewer chords in common. But as long as you establish the role of the chord in each key, in other words, it's Roman numeral, you should be okay. As we mentioned earlier, you can also change from major keys to minor keys and vice versa. As before, we're looking for chords in common to use as a pivot, but minor keys come with a few more complications that it is worth briefly looking at. We once again want to establish the destination key after our modulation. In natural minor slash Aeolian keys, the one, four and five chords are minor chords. The four to one plagial cadence still works, so you could consider using that to reinforce your new tonal center. For the strongest reinforcement, you will often see the major five dominant seventh to one change. This uses the major five dominant seventh chord rather than the minor five chord. Let's look at an example. We'll use the closely related C major and E minor keys. There are several pivot chord options, but we'll use A minor, which is the six chord in our initial key and the four chord in our destination key. As before, we'll start with the one, five, six, four progression in C major. In bar nine, we'll use our pivot chord A minor. Once we've changed key, we'll use the major five dominant seventh chord 
chord and the destination key 1 chord to establish our new minor key. Then we go into the same chord progression as before. Listen out for the use of the minor 5 chord in the main chord progression. It is common to use both major and minor 5 chords in minor key songs. We've looked at several pivot chord ideas and techniques which means you should now be able to create a common chord key change in your own songwriting. But we've used the same chord progressions throughout. Let's now consider a more real world example. The G major key song will be used again now. If we look at G major on the circle of fifths, you can see that our closely related keys are D major, C major, B minor and A minor. You can have several key changes in the song and as long as you prepare for them they won't sound out of place. So let's try and have a different key for each section of the song. We'll keep the choruses in G major. If you notice, the final chorus is slightly different from the rest. Whilst this created some interest when the whole song was in a single key, now we're changing key, it might create confusion. So we'll change the final chorus to be the same as the rest. The verses lead into our choruses, and as such we don't want a huge change. So we'll use the closely related major key of C major. To make life easy, we'll also change the intro into the C major key. We'll keep the same Roman numeral sequences in the changed keys. What we need to do is introduce the pivot chords and other chords to smooth out the key changes. We could add a pre-chorus to extend the key change, but for simplicity, what we'll do here is change the final bar of the verse. To open up this space, we'll take the previous chords that span two bars and put them into one. Then in our empty bar, we'll use the C major chord one from the verse for the first half of the bar. This is also the four chord in the chorus G major key. We will then use the five dominant seventh chord from the chorus G major key for the second half of the final verse bar. This sets us up for the one chord at the beginning of the chorus. Now at the end of the chorus, we need to accommodate our next key change. We're moving back to the verse in C major. So we'll use the four and one chords because they are the same as the one and five dominant seventh chords in our verses and should quickly establish the change of key. Again, we'll squash this down into a single bar for simplicity. We then repeat our verse and chorus with the key changes. At the end of the second chorus in bar 36, we are heading to the bridge. To emphasise the difference of the bridge, we will move to a minor key. One of our closely related minor keys was B minor, so we will use that. The pivot chord in this case is the 3 chord B minor, which is the same as the 1 chord in our destination key. Again, we'll squash this into the final bar of the chorus, and to really signal a move into a minor key, we'll follow it with the major dominant 7th 5 chord. Now we need one final change to get us back to G major for our last chorus. The 3 chord in the key of B minor is D major. Handily, this is the 5 chord in our chorus key of G major. So we'll just replace the last bar in the chorus with the 3 chord. To enhance it and add some variety, we will split it in two. The first half will be the standard D major, and the second half will be the D dominant 7th to take us back to the key of G major for the chorus. As you can now see, there are so many considerations when planning key changes. It can become a bit overwhelming, so the best approach is to first see if your song even needs a key change. If you think it does, start with a single simple change and go from there. If you experiment and find something that works, then use it. Don't worry about rules. Everything we cover is purely for inspiration. Let's now listen to our revised song.
Watch the video on screen now to see the major key song written from start to finish.